Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today I'm going to be working on my Austrian pine, getting it ready for spring. Here is a look at my Austrian pine. I took this tree into the Toronto Bonsai Society's Critique Night and I got lots of good feedback on the tree, lots of suggestions for the future. So I'm slowly trying to overcome all the defects or faults in the tree, making it look better and better each year. So today I'm going to start by needle thinning the tree. You can see on the branches how dense they are. And there's a lot of back buds in on these branches that aren't getting a lot of light. So thinning the needles helps get light to all those new buds that are developing. And the first step is to remove all the needles that are facing downwards. The needles on the bottom of the branches don't get a lot of light, so they're not as efficient at generating energy for the tree as the needles on the top of the branch. So that's a good step for needle thinning is to remove all these lower needles off the branches. And that's where I'll begin. One of the major faults of this tree is that the trunk is nice down below and then it has a bulge here where there was originally a whirl of branches and the trunk kind of goes from thick to thin and back to thick again. So I've got two sacrifice branches up top that I'm allowing to grow and my goal is to try and even out the trunk so it's not so lumpy in sections. The only branches I won't be thinning are my two sacrifice branches up top. I want lots of needles on them so they grow really strongly and help thicken up the trunk. I'll start the needle thinning at the top of the tree and work my way down removing all those bottom needles off the branches. So here I go. To remove the lower needles off the branches, you can pluck them off by hand, but you run the risk of pulling off dormant buds with the needles. So I prefer to come in with the scissors and just scissor prune off the lower needles, leaving just a little bit of the needle on the branch. That way you're not pulling off any dormant buds. Here's an example of where I would prune. So you can see these needles here facing downwards. So I just come in near the base of the needle and prune them off. Leaving just a little bit of a stub of the needle on the branch. And they quickly dry up and fall off. The more branches you have on your tree, the longer it takes to remove the lower needles. I think it'll take at least an hour for me to do this operation. So we'll come back once that's all done and see how the tree looks. I have finished removing the lower needles off the branches. The only places that have needles underneath the branches are where there's small buds on the bottom of the branch. So I've left those needles on those buds. With the clip and grow pine, any buds that are on the bottom of the branches are good because you can develop those to keep the branches uh, sweeping downwards or more horizontal. You don't want you know your buds shooting straight up on the branches. So eventually you can clip back to those buds on the bottom of the branches and keep that branch direction looking good. So my next step, you can see the branches are still really dense with needles. So what I have to do is go in and reduce each growing tip, so each branch, down to maybe four or five sets of needles, so thinning it out. And that'll open the tree up a lot so you'll be able to see the structure of it. So a lot of these older needles further down on the branches can be pruned away. And that'll leave me with just some healthy needles at the tips of each of the branches. And that should thin the tree quite a bit. I'll probably end up taking off ah, at least probably 75% of the foliage. Maybe not that much, maybe 60%. So it'll be a big change. It did take me about an hour to remove all the bottom needles off the tree. 
This thinning process, that'll take even longer because you have to go into each branch and look at the needles and prune away the ones further back on the branch, leaving just a small cluster at the tips. I'll show you an example of what I'm talking about on this branch right here. So the branch above it, I'll prune back some of the older needles off it so I can see this branch. So this branch, you can see it has quite, quite a lot of needles on the growing tip. So I'm going to come back and prune away some of the ones that are further back on the branch. My scissors are starting to get clogged up with pine sap on them. So it's a good idea to get some soap and water and clean the scissors off every now and then to keep them working nicely. So I'm still working at thinning out this, this branch here. So there's some really old needles way back on the branch here I can take out like that. So I'm getting there with the, this branch tip, but you can see there's still a lot of needles at the tip. So I can reduce that further. I will take off this lower set here. And these ones, like that, this one. I'll just clean up some of these previous needles that I pruned away. Taking those stubs back a little further. And I think that's good for that branch. So you can see I have a small cluster of needles at the tip of that branch. That's all you need. And the rest of the branch is bare. So sunlight can hit this branch and then you can get back buds on that branch now. And this keeps your branches nice and clean so you get good air circulation around the branches. You can see if there's any insect problems. If your pine gets too cluttered up, it's almost impossible to see what's going on with the tree. Just working on the branch beside this one now. needles off here. So here is a good example. I hope you can see in here there's all kinds of back buds on this branch. There's one, two, three in there. So without getting light to those they won't develop into branches. So this needle thinning will allow light to get down there and you'll get branches developing in that area. So I'll work away pruning up this one branch and then we can come back and see what it looks like before I continue on with the rest of the tree. You'll see how sparse it looks. This branch here has needles going from way back here on the branch all the way up to the tip. So all these needles at the back here of the branch can be pruned away and they're they're needles from the year before. So I just keep a cluster of needles at the tip and then you'll get back budding. You can already see on this branch there's a, well, if I clean the needles away here you'll see it. So back here on the branch, go away. There's two buds, there's another shoot developing here, and you'll get more back buds on this. As long as they get light, they generally back bud. So I can still take more off the tip of this branch. 
And these long handle scissors really help for this because you can reach in and prune at the interior of the branches. So there, now I'm just left with a cluster of needles at the tip of that branch. It's thinned out really nicely. So here is a case of, you know, I was talking about buds growing back in. There's one here I can take out. It's just not growing in a good direction. It's a useless branch. Just clutters it up. This one also, you can see it's kind of growing in, but I guess this one, you know, it could be redirected outwards in the future, so I'll leave it on. There's a lot of needle density here I can take out. I have got the first branch needle thinned. So here is a look at the branch from above. So you can see it's, you can see the actual branch structure now. You can see all the back buds in here from underneath. You can see it's quite clean underneath. So next I'm going to prune that branch up. So here I can see there's a new shoot that's interfering with the branch beside it. I've got like two opposite branches here, so this one can be pruned off. There's a vertical shoot here that can be pruned off. There's another one here. Yeah, so there's, there's some work to do. I can shorten some of these branches, like this one for instance. I have some good back buds further back on the branch so I could take the tip off if I wanted. Yeah, so that's my next step is to prune up this branch. You can see here there's quite a cluster of branches all kind of growing from one spot so it needs some cleaning up so it's always dividing from one to two which will keep your branches nice and clean and they won't get ugly knobs on them. All right, so here I go with some branch cleanup. So this one is growing across the branch beside it here, this branch here. So that one needs to be pruned back. I've got a good shoot down below, which would flatten that branch out. So I'll take the tip off this branch, this upwards part. Here I go. Like that. That helps. I have to wait until this these buds extend out here before I can shorten it further but that would be the plan for the future so it's not overlapping the branch beside it. I've got an upright tip here and I've got a better branch coming out the front so I'm going to take that upright tip off like that. Here I've got two opposite branches. It's getting a little crowded in that section so I'm going to take this one that's kind of growing backwards off keeping my branches fanning outwards. I can do a little clean up here on a stub like that. At this branch tip I'm getting quite cluttered. I need to thin it out somewhat. So here I've got interference again. This one's kind of growing across. So I'll take the, will I take the tip off? No, I think, I think I'll take that whole branch off. Here I go. Because I have another branch opposite it. So that cleans up that interference. Now this one is growing quite vertical. And I have another branch that's more horizontal underneath it. So I'm going to take off that vertical branch. Like that. Again, thinning out the branches. I have a vertical shoot here that's sticking straight up. I'm going to take that off. Keeping my branch that's on a bit more of an angle. I've got another vertical one here. I've got a bud 
back lower on it so I'll have to leave this branch and then as that bud extends out I can prune this tip back. Now if I wanted to shorten this branch I could take this growing tip off. I've got you know my new growing tip here. I don't think I want to shorten it though. I think I want to keep that length. Back here I'm getting very congested. I've got a branch growing over top of another branch here. I've got double branches at the back here. And I think I was waiting for the top one to strengthen up before I removed the bottom one. I think that was my plan. So removing that bottom one would take a lot of this, this whole branch off here. Which is okay because it's growing underneath another branch. It was kind of shaded out anyway. I think that was my plan. Let me have a look at it from the front. So I'm looking at that branch from the front here. So that branch extends out to here, which kind of keeps it nice in the profile. Yeah, I'm not sure what to do here. I think that's why I left it last time. I wasn't sure what to do. Um, you can see this part of the branch is growing up, so there's not much space between this branch and the one above it. I could prune some of these more vertical sections off. I think I will. I'll take this one off. Like that. And I'll take this part off. Kind of flattening the branch out a bit. Well, there's part of the branch growing straight back from the front, you can't even see it, so I'm going to take that off. That's gone. And then, this one's also kind of growing back. It doesn't, the radial direction of the branch is here, so I'm getting quite far off my radial direction. So I'm going to prune this part of the branch off, like that. Kind of getting it more out here rather than underneath this other branch. And I could even prune it back further, and I think I will. I'll take this part off. Keeping it, you know, out here rather than underneath that branch. So I think that looks good. I think that's a step ahead anyway. And I'll leave that double branch decision for later on. It, it's, not, it's not the worst thing in the world. I mean, you see that in nature. One branch slightly above another. Now, I'm quite congested at the tip here. But I think I've got to let these branches grow out before I decide what to prune on those. So I think that's going to stay as it is. Here's a look at that branch. So it's looking nice. There's that double branch in here. I was talking about this one growing above the one underneath. So it might be just a matter of moving that upper one, keeping that bottom one. So from the front, it, it looks, looks like quite a nice branch. It's got a good structure underneath. So next, I'll prune up my number one branch, my lowest branch here. Get that all thinned out and pruned up. You can see the big difference between a branch that's thinned, that lowest one down there, and some of these upper ones which are just thick with needles. You can't see the branch structure at all. I've got my lowest branch needle thinned so I can see the structure. It's not the greatest structure in this branch. It's a little awkward and knobbly looking. 
But hopefully in the future I can improve that once these lower branches start growing here. I can reduce this knob on the top. So I'm going to do a bit of structural pruning. I've got some vertical shoots here. I, I want to prune off to give light to some of the new shoots down below there. So here I go. It's time to prune up that branch. All right, so here I go. So that one vertical shoot I want to remove entirely. So that's gone. That gives lots of light to these buds that are coming off the side of the branch. And then uh, on this branch, I have two branches that are growing back in towards the tree here. So I'm definitely going to take out the one on the inside here, that one. And then do I have two good branches at the tip here? I've got a bud underneath the needles here. That's a good one. And I've got one this side. So yes, I can take off this one. So that is gone. That gives, that gives light to that bud underneath. So that's good. There's one growing on the top here. I don't want that. So I'm taking that one off. Again, you know, dividing from my one branch to two out at the tip. And then I've got this one here. I think I'll leave this one on. It'll help draw sap to that branch and keep it healthy. And then once it's, once these new tips are growing nicely, then I can prune that off. You don't want to do everything at once. I've got one on top here that I think I want to prune away. Yeah, I do. So off it comes. And then I have, this branch comes out and divides into two here, but I've got all these buds on the inside. And I think I want to prune off this part of the branch, keeping it kind of coming out in a radial direction. Right now, this part of the branch is blocking light to the one beside it. And I think the one down lower is the better branch. So, I'm going to prune this part of the branch off. So here I go. Like that. That gives light down to this one down here, which will keep my branch going flatter. So this branch still divides from the one into the two because I have some buds here. Now I think I've got one bud above another here, so I want to take off my upper bud to give some light to that lower one. And this one's got to come off too. Cleaning this branch structure up. Otherwise you get a cluster of buds in one area and you get those thick ball-shaped structures instead of your branches being clean and flowing. And I can show you an example of that right here. You can see how there's a ball shape on the end. And that's because of bad pruning by me. Sometimes your oldest trees have the most faults because you don't always know what you're doing at first when you start working on a tree. You get better and better with time. I'm just doing a bit of needle thinning there. Okay, so I've got the two buds down below here on this branch I want to develop and then I'll take this ball part off. I think I will take this bud off because it'll give light to these ones below and this one will come off. That'll help clean this branch structure up a bit. Kind of setting it up for the future. Like 
that. And then you can see I have my two branch leaders here, but I have this third branch over here. And I'm not sure I want that. From the front, it kind of goes straight out the back. Hmm. I think I better prune off the part of it that's interfering with the bud I want to keep. So I'll prune this shoot off like that and just clean up the needles in this area. So this bud has lots of light here. Like that. If you can see the bud from the top, it'll survive. If it's hidden, it won't survive. It's kept in the dark. Okay. Now, out the back of this branch, I have some shoots developing. Well, I definitely don't want this one growing back in here. It's in a very poor location. So I'll take that one out. And then I'll definitely take this one out. And I'll keep this one. There's one growing from the bottom of the branch, which is nice. And then this one. So this one could come off in the future, but for now I'll leave it on. Then in between these two branches, I have some buds in here I've got to clean out. Okay. So this bulge is ugly, but that will get carved away in the future. It'll leave a bit of a scar like these two, but it's better than that bulge. Now on this branch I've got a couple of vertical ones here. And I don't think I need any of those. No, so they're coming off too. There's one. And this one needs to come off. And that leaves me with two bar branches here. So, my radial direction is here. I think this one's got to come off. Like that. That helps clean that up. Cleans up this whole lower branch here. Not so keen on this one, but again, once these buds develop into branches, this one can get pruned off. But other than that, I think it's looking good. This one shoot here is quite vertical, but there's nothing to replace it with yet. So that's got my lowest branch thinned, pruned up, and it's ready, ready for spring. Here is an overall look at the tree now, so you can see how fuzzy it is up top. And then the two lowest branches are a little more sparse. But they're looking good, they're looking much more refined looking. Yeah. So I've got lots of branches to go, so I think the next one I'll tackle is this one out front here. It's later in the afternoon now, and it's starting to get dark out already. The days are so short now. I'm having trouble seeing the needles underneath the branches properly, so I'm going to continue the work on the Austrian pine tomorrow. Julian has been working on the Porsche. Let's go into the Porsche garage and see what he's been up to. Here is the progress on the Porsche. So Julian's been cleaning out the front boot. And he found a hole down here. So this is the fuel tank in the car. I imagine I'll have to replace that. It's probably all rusty inside. Um, so that's one thing that needs changing. Julian's been working away at the interior here, uh, cleaning it all up. Um, we're trying to take the seats out they're kind of rusted in place. I can't slide them back and forth. 
so we got to free those up and he's been cleaning it up and uh, yeah that's the updates for today so just clean up and trying to get it apart I guess that'll come we did buy some lights uh, for the garage that we're going to hang up so we can work our way into the uh, later hours of the evening here is a look at the one tire that was flat and there was no save in this tire it's done for Julian has set up all the lights in the garage here so Julian you can work on this car 24 hours a day now right Absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to continue the work on my Austrian pine tomorrow thinning out the needles and finishing off the pruning of the branches so that's all for part one of this series I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.